Hello, my loves. Welcome to Lifestyle Manifesting. I'm Shannon. On my channel, I talk all about manifesting as a lifestyle. You are having success. Today, I want to talk about Neville Goddard. I have been on uh, vacation. I've been on spring break. I haven't been around, but I've been spending a lot of time reading Neville and taking notes. And I was taking notes on um, things that really felt powerful for me while I was reading Neville Goddard. And I want to share some of those with you, what Neville said. The kingdom of heaven is simply that state into which a man rises, where everything is completely subject to his imaginative power. Do you understand we can create the kingdom of heaven within us? So let me reread that. The kingdom of heaven is simply that state into which man rises. The kingdom of heaven. Okay, do you understand we can create heaven on earth? The kingdom of heaven is within your imagination. Neville said the kingdom of heaven is simply that state. It's a state into which man rises where everything is completely subject to his imaginative power. That's where we are. That's we are where we are. We are in the kingdom of heaven because we understand that everything is completely subject to your imagination. You have woken up to know that your imagination creates and you can create heaven on earth. The kingdom of heaven is within you and you can create heaven on earth. All right, here's another quote from Neville that I really found powerful. What you see when you look at something depends not so much on what is there as on the assumption you make when you look. This is really important. When you want to know why your world isn't changing, because what you see when you look at something depends not so much on what's there, but on the assumption you make when you look. What you believe to be the, the real physical world is only a, an assumptive world. So if you can get control, have um, gain control of what, what you're thinking and assuming, you will change the trajectory of your life. Okay, here's another statement by Neville Goddard. If you can change your opinion of another, okay, so if you can change your opinion of your specific person or the people you work with or your customers, right? If you can change the, your opinion of another, then what you now believe of him cannot be absolutely true, but relatively true. Men believe in the reality of the external world because they do not know how to focus and condense their powers to penetrate its thin crust. What he's saying is it's not, it's only relatively true. It's not absolutely true what you see in your reality. And everything will change according to the assumptions you make. You can change your opinion about someone. You can change your conception about someone and they will reflect your new conception as long as you're able to, like he, he says, penetrate the thin crust, but it, you have to persist in that assumption no matter what you see. Instead of believing in the reality of the external world, believe in the reality of your imagination because that's first cause. So you start with your imagination. What are you imagining? Because what you imagine, it becomes your future. What you're imagining becomes the next present moment of your life. It becomes your future. Okay, here's, here's another one I wrote down about Neville Goddard. If, he said, if you remain faithful to your vision, this sustained mental attitude will give reality to your vision. Let me repeat that. If you remain faithful to your vision, this sustained mental attitude will give reality to your vision. You have to stay loyal to that vision. Faithful means loyalty to your vision, okay? Okay, um... Let me read the whole statement that I wrote down. If you remain faithful to your vision, this sustained mental attitude will give reality to your visions, and they will become visible, concrete facts in your world. Define your highest ideal and concentrate your attention upon this ideal until you identify yourself with it. Assume the feeling of being it. The feeling that would be yours were you now embodying it in your world. This assumption, though now denied by your senses, if persisted in, will become a fact in your world. 
You will know when you have succeeded in fixing the desired state in consciousness simply by looking at the people you know. This is a wonderful check on yourself as your mental conversations are more revealing than your physical conversations are. If in your mental conversations with others, you talk with them as you formally did, then you have not changed your concept of self. For all changes of concepts of self result in a changed relationship with the world. You, th so this is actually really powerful because if you know, let me, let me go back to what he said. Define your highest ideal and concentrate your attention upon it. Assume the feeling of being it. The feeling that would be yours were you now embodying it in your world. Okay, so you're embodying that reality. You're in that reality. You're thinking from that reality. Now, how do you know that you're really in the end? When you pay attention to your inner conversations, the mental conversations you're having, and the mental conversations you're having with others. What mental conversations are you having with your specific person? Living in the end of the self-concept to have your desire, you would be saying things as if you already have your desire. Like, like, I love being loved by you. I love that you're my person. I love that you're in my life. I love that we are already together. I love that we live together. I love that we laugh so much. These are inner conversations from the premise of having your wish fulfilled. That's what your inner conversation should be. Something else Neville said, all things are possible to him who believes with God, all things are possible. God and the believer are one. That's important. You're the believer. Okay. And when he says believer, it doesn't mean you have to believe 100%. It's like what you're saying, right? You're the chooser. I, I would probably insert chooser into that. The believer and the chooser, you're the chooser of your reality. All things are possible to him who believe or choose. You're choosing your reality. With God, all things are possible, and God and the chooser, who, who's you, are one. All things are possible for you. Here's something else. I'm giving Neville Goddard quotes for anyone else joining. Thank you for all the love. I appreciate it. All you need to do is believe you are what you want to be, and then let the world, which is nothing more than yourself pushed out, go to work to make your assumption possible. I promise you, your desire will be fulfilled for all things are possible for him who believes. We could also interchange a new word instead of believe, it could be choose or it could be um, who is, who's faithful, right? All things are possible for one, the one, you, because <laughs> you're already the one, the one who's faithful, the one who's loyal, lo faithful is loyal, right? You're loyal to your vision, you're claiming your vision, you're claiming you already have it. All you need to do is believe what you you are, what you want to be, and then let the world, because it's nothing more than yourself pushed out, go to work. It will go to work for you. It's already working for you. Everything is already working for you. It's already working for you according to your beliefs, according to your inner conversations and what you're thinking and assuming. Oh, I like this one. This one I wrote down, Neville Goddard. He said, you may not know anyone who would give you $10,000 right now, but if you believe all things are possible to God and you know God is your human imagination, you can imagine you have the money. Persist in your belief and you will have it. I do not know how. I only know that according to your belief, will it be done unto you? Do you believe all things are possible to God? And do you believe he is your own wonderful human imagination? Okay, let me repeat that one for those of you manifesting money. You may not know anyone who would give you $10,000 right now, but if you believe all things are possible to God and you know God is your human imagination, you can imagine you have the money. Persist in your belief and you will have it. I do not know how. I only know that according to your belief will it be done unto you. Do you believe all things are possible to God? And do you believe he's your own wonderful human imagination? Um, also, I, I talk a lot about planting a seed, which which I take from a lot of the, the manifesting greats, right? Like Neville, um, 
even Abraham Hicks talks about planting seeds, it, it, because that idea is really powerful. We're planting a seed. Okay, so Neville said, have full confidence in the planting of that seed. Have full confidence in the planting of your seed. What would it be like if it were true? Okay, so that's getting into the end of the wish fulfilled. What would it be like if your wish were true? Live as though your dream is already a fact. So how do you do that? By with your inner conversations. Think. We could we could say that instead of live. With think as though your dream is already a fact, okay? Talk about that it's already true. You just have to talk about that it's already true because your word is what's creating your reality. Those were some of the notes I took while I was on my spring break. So I wanted to read some Neville Goddard quotes because those were really powerful. Live in the end of your assumption. And what one of the most powerful things you can do is just co correct your inner conversations. This means you need to be aware of what you're thinking and what you're assuming and what you're talking about with yourself because you're, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> you're already doing this. You're already having inner conversations. Things happen in your world and you're making assumptions. So that's what you want to pay attention to. What is that assumption you're making? Is it, are you making assumptions that it's not going in your favor or, because that's okay if you recognize when you have a thought and you're like, oh, it's not going to happen or it's not my favor. I want you to just recognize it and then you change it there. That's not true. You can change your belief by affirming something new. Thoughts are only, or beliefs, the beliefs that you hold, the beliefs you hold are only thoughts that you've been thinking over and over. And that's why they, they, they are true. Not only are they true because you're thinking it, because your world reflects it. If you change what you're thinking, you will change your reality. It's really, it's as simple as that, but yes, you need to be disciplined. And yes, it might feel like it's a process. And yes, it's a skill. It is an art. It is an art to do this. Hello. Okay, well, let me go to your questions. Um, how to manifest someone that has a different religion. J Griselda, just start saying they have a different re religion. I have personally done this. Okay. Everything in your reality is yourself pushed out. We make assumptions about people. We make assumptions about religion. But anything is, everything is malleable. Okay, you can shift into the reality where they have a different religion. What you're going to do is claim it in your mind. Uh, you, so when you're claiming it in your mind, I want you to see, okay, most people say ignore the circumstance. Yeah, I say that too. You, but you ignore the circumstance, but more, more specifically, replace the circumstance. You see the circumstance, but you're going to replace it. You're going to replace it with the wish fulfilled. What would it be like if you already have your desire? You'd be saying something. What would you be saying? If this person is already, do you want them to be the same religion as you? If this person is already the same religion as you, what would you be saying? And that's what you're going to affirm until it becomes true, until it's a fact in your life. <laughs> Marina said, so do frequency, do, you know, does frequency have anything to do with manifestation? Here's how I look at it, because we hear people say frequency, but that just doesn't resonate with me so much. Frequency. Like, what, what is that? What the hell does that mean, right? That's what at least I sort of wondered. But here's what I know. Here's what I would say. Frequency is what you're thinking and feeling and believing, okay? Frequency, your frequency is what you're, you're thinking, feeling, and believing. Here's how I teach, because I see this, this is true. What I'm thinking is happening, what I'm believing and assuming is happening. I mean, you could throw out the whole idea of frequency if you want. They're just describing it a different way. I, instead of saying frequency, I'm saying thoughts. That's really the same thing, your thoughts. What thoughts are you having? Your thoughts are creating your reality. That's what frequency really is, your thoughts, how you're feeling. Your, you, someone could say it's your emotion. Again, everyone might have some different perspective about that. But if you do one thing, you could just change your inner conversations. Change what you're saying because your word creates your reality. The words you're saying create your reality. Krista, how do we look past circumstances that are emotional and painful? It's so fresh, I'm heartbroken. First, by knowing that you have the power to make a change. The fact that you're realizing that you're the creator, you, do you understand that you even created the circumstance? 
You created it unconsciously. You created the circumstance. It came from you. It was not intentional. It's because you were living conditions in a program. You were living a life where, you, I mean, we all did. We all lived this life, right? And we believed that the outer world had all the power, but that's not true. And just knowing this should help you feel more empowered. Just the fact, the mere fact that you're bigger than that circumstance, just knowing that should help you shift. Because all you have to start doing now is talking about what you do want as if you have it, right? What would it be like if you have your desire? What would you be saying? What would you be thinking? Could you look at the circumstance and find value in it? Yes, it's painful. But guess what? Aren't you a little more hopeful now that you're the one who created it? Now that you know that, you have the power to change it. I know it's so fresh, but don't you want to change it? And you're the one who has the power to change it. So you change the circumstance by seeing something different with a new perspective. Okay, I look at my past circumstances that were really painful and I take all the value from that. What was valuable? What the most important thing that was valuable is it showed me what was within me. For me, it was jealousy, resentment, um, not feeling enough, insecure. All of that was reflected out. And and I I um, experienced very painful emotional things. I could see that I created it. Go back to your own thoughts. Connect the dots. Okay, because that little, that, that exercise of really understanding, an exercise of connecting the dots, what you were thinking and, and assuming, and the fact that you created it, when you're recognizing you're the creator, that should empower you. Because you actually have the power to change it. If I'm affirming and doing the work for over a year, but nothing changed in the 3D, will this ever catch up? You have to say, and it changed in the 3D. What would you be saying if your wish were fulfilled? You have to be seeing that vision. When you say nothing has changed, that's what you're, you're affirming, and then you ended your thought on, but nothing changed. Well, that's where you end your thought, and that's what reality is reflecting to you. Will it ever catch up? You're the creator. Declare it. Okay, so maybe you want to think about intentions. Okay, I intend. I affirmed I'm doing the work and I intend to see the results. I am seeing results. Go to the end. If you had your desire, what would you say? What would you think? I'm telling you, you it, it, this is a discipline. It is a discipline. It is an art. It's not natural to think this way on some in some way, right? It's not it wasn't natural for me to 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 think this way. But I could see that my reality was reflecting me. So if I had thoughts like, "Oh my god, I'm losing faith, it's not working," I would catch it. Maybe I didn't catch it right away even in my own experience, right? I might have been that way for like weeks or months and then I was like, oh, I'm saying, what I'm saying is happening. If I'm starting to lose faith, I'm not going to see any results in my world. And I would have a realization like, I need to say, I have faith. I would just say it. Even I didn't have faith. I just said it. I, I have faith. I intend to have faith. I just kept declaring it. I persisted in it. I kept, I let that voice be louder than the voice of, I'm losing faith. That, that, fa that voice was very big. And the voice was like, I, you know, the voice that I'm losing faith was very big. And this is like, maybe I have a little faith. I had to bring this voice up bigger, taking over, embodying. I did that intentionally. Okay, so I would say I have faith, but I didn't. I intend to have faith. I would look at my vision. I didn't really have a vision board, but I'd go to Pinterest. <laughs> okay. I would go to Pinterest and I would look at the vision of what I wanted to see. I would script it out and get lost in it so I could hold myself loyal to the vision. That's where you need to spend more of your thoughts. 
I intend that you just something clicks today. I, you know, you, all possibilities exist. Something can click right now here today and you have a reflection. But see that, do you see that the way I'm speaking? That can happen now. You can have a reflection. I'm not saying that it's not working. I'm saying it can happen now because there's only the present moment now. You're creating from the present moment. What are you saying? The most important moment is the present moment. What are you talking about in the present moment? That it's not working. You're losing faith because that's what you're creating. And you have the power to make a change. Whatever you need to do to hold yourself to that vision. Okay, like make note cards, three by five cards, keep alerts in your phone, hang around people, be in a community, come to lives like this where you're around a community that reminds you that you're the one who has all the power and you're the one who gets to choose your reality and you choose your reality with your mental diet. You choose your reality with your thoughts. So now do you want to be a little more selective about your thoughts? Because it is a choice. You have to choose. You think about Dr. Joe Dispenza. Break the habit of being yourself. Is that what his what, the title of one of his books? Break the habit of being yourself. You have to break the habit of being that version of you who says, it's been a year, nothing changed. Break free from that version of you and start being that new identity where you say, everything's changed. It is changing. You're just not seeing it. You have to declare it. You have to say it before you'll see it. Do you, do you get that? You have to see it before you see it. Whatever you're saying, you're going to see. So if you're saying it's been a year, that's what you're seeing. Yeah, you, you do have to have a wicked imagination. Because you the, the wicked imagination is that, I'm not sure how you're saying that, but I'm like wicked cool, right? Like that kind of wicked. Wicked imagination, like you're able to see the vision even when the circumstances, even if it's been... There's that much time or wh whatever time has passed, but you're able to st still see the vision bigger than what the circumstance is. Do you have any tips to deal with moments of wavering? It, Allie, just tell yourself it's okay. You, see, you could release that resistance just by saying, I'm wavering. That's okay. You just, it, you'll just let it go. You'll just let it go. That way you let it go so you come back to knowing come back to knowing you're the creator come back to knowing what you say is your reality okay so when you're wavering just say that's okay i was wavering not a big deal i have negative thoughts i go oh, that's not a big deal it's not a big deal i'm not going to make a big deal about it why do i not want not want to make a big deal about it so it'll just like it really just d dissolves away if you're wavering, just start to think about like you could remember the things that you deliberately manifested and you could be grateful for that. You could be grateful for all the things that exist. You could be grateful for all the things that you have in your life because great being grateful is having and that's living in the end and you're going to get more of that. That's one of the that's actually a really great hack. A great key to living life is being grateful. Be grateful and see your vision. Be also be grateful for your vision and everything that exists that you don't even that doesn't even um that's not a manifested or realized in, it's not realized in your reality yet. But you're grateful for that. You're I mean you're grateful for that the fact that it exists, not for the fact that it's not materialized yet. But you're grateful for that desire that you can imagine. Okay, does manifestation is what state are you in currently or is it catching up gradually? It's what you say it is. We are manifesting instantly, but okay, so why do we want to say that it's crad, uh, catching up gradually? Why is it catching up or why is it a, a good idea to say that? Because it's going to make you feel better and you won't feel so worried. And you're like, oh, it's just catching up, no big deal. Uh, you already know you planted the seed. Okay, so yes, use what story, th th it's a story again, <laughs> that's a story, but use the stories that help you stay in the end. What if this happened today? What if I already have my desire? What if best case scenario? Why don't you just start like looping best case scenario? Do you have any affirmations for someone you haven't met yet? For manifesting someone you haven't met yet? 
Are you talking about for um, like a specific person, new love? Let's just talk about, it doesn't matter whether it's new love, it doesn't matter what the desire is. If it's money, if it's something at work, if it's something with your health, if it's specific person, if it's new love. What would you be thinking? What would you be saying if you had your desire? And that's your affirmation. That's your affirmation. So if you already know, uh, even if it's, it's new love, you've no, you have no idea who the person is, but you just want new love. Or maybe you kind of know someone you haven't met yet. I don't know if you met, like you kind of know who they are, but you haven't met them in person. Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, just go to the end. What would you be thinking if you already had your desire? Now think that. And here's where I guide you. Okay, I want you to think more about who are you being because who you are manifests your reality. So see yourself as someone who's already loved. See yourself as somebody already in the relationship. So you just think that I'm already in a relationship or we already met and we fell madly in love. It was love at first sight. Just tell a story. Tell the most brilliant story and just loop that in your mind. It could just be one little clip of like one little clip. We met it was love at first sight and that's it. Okay, and then you're repeating that over because your reality is going to reflect what you're saying. Hi, Brandon. Hello. Thank you for the rose. Was supposed to meet SP for the first time, but it never happened. How to manifest us still meeting. Okay, and that was months ago. So where are you? This is where I want you to kind of get a gauge on where are you? Are you dominantly thinking, what happened? Why did that? Happen? What, what happened there? We were supposed to meet. It didn't happen. Okay, but you're still in the problem. Go to the solution. If you have your desire, if your dream was already fulfilled, what would you be saying? We already met. We already met. We had a great time. We had a great connection. We already went out. You could go. It doesn't matter where you want to go to the end of. Do you want to go to the end of already being in a committed relationship? That person fell head over heels for you. Okay, so take that timeline and speak as if you already have your desire. Your inner conversations are already manifesting. Okay, so when I talk about self-concept means you have your desire. Okay, my self-concept course is all about you seeing yourself as someone who's a master manifester. If you need help, use my self-concept course. See yourself as someone who's a master manifester. See yourself as someone who gets anything you want. That's another way to live in the end, right? Like you see the bigger picture. The bigger picture is you can manifest and create any kind of reality. Select any, really you're selecting, but you're selecting any reality you want to be in. And you do that with your inner conversations and the way you see yourself, the way you're talking about yourself. You're already talking about yourself all day long on some level, right? Whether you look in the mirror and you make a comment about it, or you put on your clothes and you make a comment, or whatever you're doing, you're already, you're already making assumptions about yourself. Are you assuming? Are you already assuming that you get anything you want? Are you all already assuming that the person who is your partner is head over heels for you, madly in love with you? Okay, so you could go to the end and assume that identity, assume that self-concept. Well, you said you've been affirming that you have 10K. I was telling a story. Do you guys want me to read that again? I had taken some notes on my spring break, Neville Goddard notes. And here's one of the notes that I took from one of Neville Goddard's lectures. So Neville Goddard said, as you may, oh, okay, as you, <laughs> hold on, as you may not know anyone who would give you $10,000 right now. By the way, Neville Goddard was saying this, that probably this was like from a lecture in the 1960s, right? $10,000 was a lot more money in, in the, the 1960s. So he said, as you may not know anyone who would give you $10,000 right now, but if you believe all things are possible to God, and you know God is your human imagination. You can imagine you have the money. Persist in your belief and you will have it. I do not know how. I only know that according to your belief, 
Will it be done unto you? Do you believe all things are possible to God? And do you believe he is your own wonderful human imagination? Okay, so you can imagine you have the money until you have it. I've had so many people join my VIP group and message me privately to say, with only being in my group within one day and somebody else within a couple days or a week, because I give you one free week. So if you haven't been part of my VIP group, join. Because we, we've been doing a money exercise. I'm going to get back into that, okay? A money exercise f with your mental diet. And the, the, so many people manifested money, even if it was some people's small amount. Don't worry if it's a stepping stone. That's okay. You'll get better and better and better at it. Sometimes it might be feel better. I'm not saying you have to do this, but for the person that it feels better, if it feels better just to give it, go in increments, go in increments. You know, like say um, your, your euros, but you could say, you know, 50 euro. And then 50-year-old comes in. Sometimes we just, you keep proving it to yourself. Now increase it. How can I manifest a message? Krissa, if you have the message already, what would you be thinking and what would you be saying? Okay. I want you to recognize. Okay, first of all, messy, ma ma manifest a message. Is that really what you want? Or do you want to manifest that this person really like is totally into you? maybe in love with you. <laughs> I don't know. What do you want to manifest? Because they're always reflecting you. Yes, you can manifest a message. Here's how you're not going to ma manifest a message. When you're like, how am I going to do this? They don't like me. Or what if there was someone else? Okay, like this is the version of you who's saying that. That's not going to happen. This is being in the problem. Here's the solution. This is where you want to be. To manifest any desire, you go d directly to the solution. Just think you're getting into a portal, into a time, like inserting yourself into that timeline where it already exists so being in the problem you're just going to stay in the problem you won't have results right it's going to be the same reality or maybe you'll have linear time <laughs> who knows over linear time maybe you'll change your your mental diet okay but to do this now instead of being in the problem you go directly to the solution so let's take the solution and bring it to the present moment what's the so the solution is like it's already done the problem solved Okay, the problem's already solved. If you already got the message, what would you be thinking? You would be thinking, I already got a message. They message me all the time. He or she is totally in love with me. He or she can't get enough of me. So if you go to this timeline and you speak in your mind saying things like that, okay, you're, you're saying the wish fulfilled. You're speaking the wish fulfilled. It must turn into a fact. It must become your reality. But you have to stay here. And so what lots of people do wrong is this is the solution or this is where the problem solved and here's the problem. And they go back and forth and back and forth because they go, haven't messaged me. And then they start and then they take this in the present moment and they're like, but they love me and they adore me and I'm chosen. They think I'm amazing and I am amazing. And then all of a sudden you start saying, but they didn't message me. Now you're living in the end. They didn't message me. So you're kind of going back, not you, but... This is what someone might be doing wrong. You're going back and forth. You need to live in the end of your desired, the fulfilled desire. So even if you didn't get a message later in the day, you would just know, well, you already affirmed it and it's done. That's it. It's like planting a seed and you, you just trust that you planted the seed and the root is growing or that seed is growing. Okay, Michelle, you said, my SP is my hubby. However, I sometimes think I should scale back to a date. Sure. Whatever you want. Go do what's comfortable for you. Go to the end. Here's what you could really, that something really powerful is your identity and how you see yourself. See yourself as the prize. See yourself as someone who gets everything and anything you want. See yourself as someone who's a magnet for any desire. That you, I mean, that's looking at the outer world, but that's okay. You're creating from your inner story. Your inner world creates the outer world. What's this inner story that you're telling? Just tell an inner story of the best case scenario. 
Okay, and then you're going to loop that in your mind no matter what. No matter what the circumstance. Whatever the circumstance is, you're going to replace it with the way you're looping this new story in your mind. You're going to disregard anything that doesn't align with your wish fulfilled. Okay, and then you do that until it becomes your life, and it will. It will. Okay, you really have to persist. What if he said his parents would get mad because he's Muslim and I'm not? Here, do you understand there's infinite versions? Do you understand there's infinite versions of your specific person? If you have your desire, what would you be saying? Disregard all appearances because you're going to shift into a new time. Everything exists right now. There's no, there, I mean, there is no really linear timeline. It's all here and now. You can shift into a timeline where, the, you know, whatever your desire is, you have it. Whatever that is for you. Like where that's irrelevant. What it, like where that doesn't even matter. Where that does not matter. Where you're welcomed. You don't have to even change their religion. Just assume that they are. They love and adore you. They accept you. That's the kind of story you could tell. I mean, whatever story you want to tell. Okay, because, I mean, infinite possibilities. Some people need to reaffirm it a lot in the beginning, and that's okay. Because you want to change. You want to make this more familiar. You start to make that story more familiar. You make that timeline familiar to you. And it, your world's always shaping around who you're being. It's really wild. It's really cool. But you're in your reality. You're in your own personal reality. Everything's reflecting you. Everything's reflecting you in your reality. Okay? So what you're assuming and who you're being, it's all shaping around you. How you see yourself in relation to all the things in your world is shaping around you. Assumptions you make in each moment of your day create your future. All of it. It's all happening from you. I love you all. You're amazing. Uh, anyone new here? I see there's a lot of new people. You can watch these replays on YouTube. So from here, the link in my bio, you could go directly to my YouTube channel. I have uh, affirmations in my playlist. If you want any meditation or affirmation ideas, that's a great place to go. Um, if you want to do the work on your own, you could use my self-concept course. It is a blueprint for you to be in the the mindset of the person who has your desire, the version of you that has your desire. And if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'd love to meet you. If, if you're looking to join a community, join my community. Level up your understanding of how you're the creator. You're in your own personal reality. Everything's reflecting you. And learn how to have the skill to create your reality and to shift to the reality that you prefer. I love you all. I'm imagining amazing things. I'm imagining your successes. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, bye.